Okay. Let's uh, start with a word of prayer, and we're going to work on our second article of the Creed tonight. Lord God, as we look more at how you died on the cross for us and rose again, I pray that these words wouldn't just be words that we hear, but would have deep meaning in our life. Pray for Shirley and for Becca, uh, for Chloe and Ashlyn, as, that, as they aren't here tonight, that they would continue to grow in you. And as they watch this video, that they would be blessed also. Um, pray that you would bless Shirley and bring healing so that she might be back among us again as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, let's start. Let's just read this second article together. And remember, you need to know this by heart. I know you've said it a lot of times in your life, but let's just practice it. Um, let's start right at the beginning. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. You know that part, don't you? Yeah. Let's do it. Oh, you can do it. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Okay, stop right there. Okay, so when you learn that, you know how I do it? Because you can say it over and over again, and it becomes rope. But think about the pictures that it does. So I believe in Jesus Christ his only son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit. So before he was born, I always imagine Jesus in the womb. He becomes little Jesus. And even though he's, la he's been forever, he's conceived by the Holy Spirit. And what do you do next after you're conceived? Born. You're born. Born of the Virgin Mary. And then they kind of skip a whole bunch of his life. But then he is crucified died, buried, and then he uh, descended into hell. How was God born? He never was. Um, he, God always exists. That's a really good question. God existed from eternity. So he never had a beginning and he'll never have an end. Now, so same way with Jesus. Jesus never had a beginning. He was never born. Um, he never will die as God. But because he wanted to save us, the only way he could save us would be becoming like us. So he, even you though, yeah, like before you were born, you didn't exist. So this doesn't make a lot of sense to us. We were, uh, God knew we were going to exist, but we didn't exist. But see, Jesus existed before he was born. And so then he's born as a human. And God, am I losing you? Hopefully I'm losing you good because yeah. this shouldn't make a lot of sense because it's impossible, but yet because he's God, he can do it. So he's born. He's a hundred percent man. D did you guys do this last time? He's a hundred percent man, but he's a hundred percent God at the same time. So as God, he's existed forever, but as man, he's never existed before. So, so now he's together, God and man at the same time. And because he's man, he can die. But because he's God, he can't die. So now he's man and God at the same time. And so he dies, even though he's ruling the entire universe while he's dying. And he's dead. And he's alive. Yeah. How does that happen? And then he rises from the dead. And he, that's how he saves us. Okay. Let me give you a little uh, story. For me, this helped me understand this. This is not a true story, by the way. So don't go around telling your parents, Pastor Travis. Yeah, this is not true. But I think it'll help you understand. So there was a guy that had a big old house in the woods. Can you kind of picture that? Or for that matter, he had a big old house with a bunch of trees in his backyard. And now, this part of the story is actually kind of true. 
these birds, he had a big picture window. Do any of you have a picture window in your house? It's just a big window, bigger than this. And we used to, I lived in the woods. And so this would happen all the time. We had a bird feeder in our window. And the birds, they would eat from the bird feeder, but every so often we'd hear the birds go boom. And then they'd go boom. And then they'd be on the ground. In fact, it, I remember one time there was this uh, uh, cardinal. This part is a true story. This actually did happen. He, he kept running into the window. And we thought, this bird must be stupid. Because it just, it would boom, hit the ground, and then it'd get up, fly, and go boom, hit the ground. It, it did it for like two days straight. I thought this bird is going to be dead. It probably is dead, but that's true story. So this guy, this part isn't true, but you'll get the idea. It's, he said to himself, what am I going to do with this bird? Because it's so stupid. It keeps running into the window. So he thought, well, I could put tape all over the window and then it wouldn't be able to, it would see the tape and not run in the window anymore. But he says, that won't be good because I can't watch the birds anymore if I do that. So he thought, well, I could board up the window, but again, same problem. He can't watch the birds. So he decided, I know what I'll do. I'll become a bird and I'll go out there and I'll go talk bird and say, hey birds, that's a window. Don't run into it. And then he would save the birds from running into the window. Do you see the point of the story, even though it's not true? That's what Jesus actually did. We're God's people. I mean, and what are we doing? We're sinning. We're hurting ourselves. We, we hurt each other. It's like running into the window. We're going to kill ourselves. And we will. Uh, you know, do you all know the Bible passage that says the wages of sin is death? In other words, if you sin, you will die. It might not happen today, but it will eventually happen. And so Jesus comes to speak in our own language and live our own language to basically tell us, hey, I'm going to save you. And so he takes the punishment we deserve on the cross. Ever think about that? Everybody, I've, I've always thought this is really stupid. I know why people do it, but you know, you get a cross and you hang it around your neck. Do you realize what we're doing when we hang a cross around our neck? What if I did this? I don't know. I'm a really bad artist. Um, and so they put you in it. This is supposed to be a hand. And then this is a big uh, electrical panel. That's my version of an electric chair. <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry, it's really I bad. Yeah, so, so could you imagine wearing an electric chair around your uh, neck and wearing it? Isn't that what the cross really is? It's not an electric chair, but it's a cross. I mean, it's the Romans torture instrument for killing people. That's what a cross is. So Jesus actually goes to the cross and gets punished for us. I mean, we deserve to go to the electric chair for our sins. I mean, you might say, well, I haven't murdered. Edelin, have you murdered anyone lately? No. What? Addison, have you stolen lately? No. Um, have you, Bria, uh, committed adultery lately? <laughs> Have you coveted anything lately? No. What is that? Like? Coveted? That's wanting things that don't belong to you. Oh. Have you ever, uh, let's see, got to give you another commandment. Have you ever had another God worshipped lately? You guys are all liars. Adeline, you've murdered. Oh, and I should talk to Becca and Ashlyn and Chloe. What have you done lately? Have you done those? If you say no, you're lying. Remember how you break the commandments. 
you can break them in deed. I mean, you could go murder somebody and that's murder. But have you ever thought about hurting somebody? Have you ever spoken any murderous words to somebody? Like your brothers? <laughs> yes, you have. Have you ever, I know you haven't probably stole something, but have you ever wanted something that wasn't, yeah. Um, and I know you guys are young, but have you ever thought it would be nice someday? I, how do I do this nicely in a classroom? Because adultery is one of those topics. You think, oh, if I could be with somebody of the other sex. Maybe you haven't done that, but in thought, it's probably happened. I was a teenager once. I know how these things work. And that be adultery. Have you ever coveted? You probably have. You wanted things that didn't belong to you, even though you didn't do it physically. Probably done it in thought or maybe in word or planned out something. And other gods, other gods could be things not just like Baal and, and Buddha, but it could be like a car or money. You see how, or an idol, like a favorite athlete. So guess what? The wages of sin for do, breaking the commandments is death. So that's probably what we should have around our neck, except that's what we actually need to have happen. But so Jesus steps in and he says, no, I'm going to take your place. I'm going to die the death you deserved on the cross. Um, you ever think about this? The cross was the absolute worst possible way you could die. That's why the Romans chose it. They spent hundreds of years mastering the worst way they could kill somebody. Because do you realize the electric chair is actually pretty nice? Because what happens? Because it's fast. Boom, and it's done. In fact, uh, how do they usually kill criminals now if, if they do? They actually don't even use the electric chair. Yep, the uh, lethal injection. They stick a needle in and give a whole bunch of illegal chemicals and it kills them instantly. Actually, that's not true. It's not exactly instant, but there's nothing instant. Um, but the cross, do you realize how long it takes to kill somebody on a cross? You have any idea? It could be up to a week. Think about it. You're hanging up there with nails in your hands and feet, and you're hanging there for a week. You know what usually kills you? It's not, not being nailed to the cross. You can live with that. But eventually, yeah, you're absolutely right. It's the breathing. Eventually, you can't hold yourself up to get a breath anymore, and you suffocate to death. It's, it's brutal. Do, and do you know that's why they broke the criminals next to Jesus' legs? They broke their legs so they could no longer push up and get a breath anymore, and they it killed them quicker because they didn't want him on the cross any longer. So that's how they killed him. But if they just let him hang there, it'd be a could be a week. Now, why did Jesus die so fast then? Because you guys read that last week, right? The uh, with Julie, you read the account from the Bible about how he was suffering on the cross. Yeah, I was thinking you did, and how he was nailed to the cross, and how he, um, but it says he was put on at nine in the morning, and by about three o'clock he died. That's not normal, by the way. Jesus is actually a pretty strong guy. He should have lived for a week, but what was on Jesus that made him die so quickly? Okay, the thorns are on his head. Okay, that wouldn't help anything. He had been whipped basically to death before he was put to death. That didn't help any. But what else was on Jesus? What did you nail on him? The sins. The sins. But how many sins did he have on him? Too many. Serious. How many sins did he have? We actually know. Okay, I'll read it. 
for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the whole world. So how many sins were on the cross? The whole world. The whole world. If it was an ordinary person on the cross, they would have been dead before they got on the cross. But this is God with your sins, my sins, and the whole world's sins. Those sins are what killed them. Actually, God the Father killed him. He would have never died if God wasn't involved because he's God. But as man, he couldn't hold all the sins of the world. You kind of get what's going on here? So that's kind of the point of the cross. He's carrying the whole sins, and it kills them. So, and he did that in our place. We deserve to go to the cross or the electric chair or lethal injection, whatever you, punishment you have. And so now do you kind of see why we wear a cross? Because the cross is a symbol for what he did there. He loved us. So the cross is a symbol of love. Okay, any questions on that? Or is, is that sound different than what you've learned growing up or about the same? Or a little bit deeper? Okay, yeah, I think it's probably a little deeper. Okay, take your sheet. Let's, let's go through this. And so for Becca, Ashlyn, Chloe, what I'm going to do is I'll get you a copy of the sheet if you don't have it at home and you can go through this. But I want to make sure you have all these answers. Uh, the first one is, what does the name Jesus mean? Lord, Lord, Lord saves. And do you remember the... Um, so the J-E is short for Yahweh. Do you remember this? Yeah. And that means I am or the Lord. And then Seuss is the Hebrew word for saves. Okay, good job. That one's on the test, by the way. The, we have a test? Yeah, well, examination at the end of the year. Yeah, we'll practice it. Don't worry. You guys won't go through that examination here. You'll probably go through with your um, pastor at faith. But that's a good thing to know. Um, the Lord saves. Okay, what does Christ mean? Okay. The chosen one, Messiah. Okay, yeah. Messiah or chosen one. Yeah, good. Um, it, it just means this is the one. And if you've ever watched Star Wars, who's the anointed one, the chosen one in Star Wars? Darth Vader, yeah. Except it's really Anakin Skywalker. So yeah. He's the chosen one. <laughs> okay. Uh, the three things Jesus saves us from, sin, death, and the devil. What are the two natures of Jesus? Amen. Yes, you got it down. So as God, he's how much God? Amen. Yeah. So... That's why Jesus lived, uh, Bria, you asked the question earlier, when was he born? Well, because he's God, he, he always existed. There was never a time he didn't exist. Um, so why would Jesus have to be God? Did you guys get this one? Okay, that is correct. Only God could take away our sins. Yeah. So to save us from our sins, only God could do it, though. A person, you could, could you take somebody other's sins off of them? Last time I checked, I can't even take care of my own sins. But God, as God, he is able to, like I said, only God could hang on the cross longer than a minute. I mean, it's, he took them all, whereas as man, he couldn't do it. Okay, so what percentage is Jesus man? Yeah. And how do you explain this? It is a mystery. Yeah, that's a good answer to a lot of questions. In fact, I don't know every answer to every question. Okay, so Adeline, this question is yours. Why did Jesus have to be a man? Um, it's on your paper. <laughs> uh, 27. 27, sorry. Oh, so he could suffer and Yeah. So that makes sense. As God, he can't really suffer. But because he's 100% man, he can suffer. So if you want, let's say you're sitting at home and going, wow, and this happened to me for real. Uh, 
my mom had cancer, pancreatic cancer, bad stuff. And I'm thinking, wow, this is no good. And then I'm praying to God, can he relate to that? Yeah, because he's 100% man. He, he knows what it is to go through suffering and maybe even trouble with diseases. He may have lost a loved one too while he was growing up, but he can relate um, as a man. So when you pray to him, it's not like going, well, I wonder what the God of the universe is going to care about what I'm going through. Well, he happened to live here for 33 years. Okay, now this is the one that you guys, um, I think, had trouble with. What are the three jobs scripture says that Jesus has? Prophet, prophet priest, and king. Okay, what's a prophet do? This is where I want you to take a little bit of notes. Um, what's a prophet? Okay, prophets can confess sins, but what do prophets do? Okay, think of the Old Testament. You got people like Moses, Elijah, their prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. What did the prophets do? Any idea? What did prophets do? Okay, yeah, you're actually getting, you're on the kind of spread the word. Uh, John the Baptist was a prophet. Yeah, Hunter. They followed Jesus. Okay, yeah. They might not have known who he was yet, but they were telling people the future. Prophets foretell the future. So Moses taught that someday a Messiah would come. King David, well, was a prophet in some ways, and he foretold that the, uh, the Savior would be in the line of the kings. So a prophet is, is basically telling the future what's going to happen. And they also, Addison, you were right on that. They preach the word. So that's one of their big jobs. They preach the word and they foretell the future. They tell people what God says. That's the job of a prophet. Okay. So how does Jesus tell the future? Anything you... Um, and if you read the Bible, you'll find lots of things that he tells the future about. But what, what does he do? What future do you have because of Jesus? Anything? Okay, Jesus died on the cross and he rose from the dead. What's going to happen to you? Are you going to die on a cross and be dead forever? Okay, what future do you have? Okay, go into heaven. So Jesus made it so you can go to heaven. So he prophesied the future about what's going to happen to you. You will live in the new heavens and the new earth. Yeah, in the resurrection forever. See, that's how he's a prophet. Whoops, I'm not showing myself. Um, let's see. So he acts like a prophet that way. How about as a king? What does a king do? This is a little easier. What do kings do? Edelon, what's a king do? Okay, they lead. Yep, that's a good answer. Addison, what do kings do? If you need a queen, we can have a queen. What does a queen do? Although, to be honest, the queen's, like the queen of England's pretty wimpy. I mean... All she does is go to parties. Like nine, she's like 99 or something ridiculous. She's way up there. I thought she was like 95. Okay, it's probably 95. I'm sure she's a nice lady, but she's not a queen or a king like we're talking about here. She's more of a figurehead. She just does the royal ceremonies. But what does a real king do? Yeah, they lead. So if a king says something, what's supposed to happen? They're supposed to, do it. They're supposed to do it. Yeah. So they command. They lead. They rule. So think about this. God is the king of the universe. He says, let there be light. And what happened? Light. There's light. God said, uh, let the waters separate from the land. So just by saying it, now you got continents and you got oceans. 
So Jesus is like that too. Do you remember what he did? Uh, he went to a wedding. You guys know this story, don't you? And they ran out of wine. So what did Jesus say? Okay, he said, uh, go get, uh, I think it's five stone water jars, fill them to the brim, and then give some to the, the uh, steward and give it to the guest. And what happened? There was wine. There was wine. And there was a lot of it. In fact, it was the best wine I bet they had ever tasted. Do you guys know how long it takes to make really good wine? No. Oh, you guys got to do that. Well, you're not old enough. Sorry, I'm getting this wrong. This is alcohols. It takes anywhere from 30 to maybe even 90 days to make good wine. So to make good wine, you got to wait. You can't just put water in a thing and it's out comes wine. But because he's king of the universe, he can do that. So, so that's the next job that Jesus is. That's why he can go to the cross and save us too. Okay, last one. What does a priest do? Okay, they do forgive sins, but how? What did the priest in the Old Testament do? Any of you remember? And I'll give you some examples. There's Aaron, the priest. Um, Eleazar, the priest. There's, man, there's probably a hundred of them. But the priests would offer sacrifices. So they would, so once a year, they would take a lamb and they would uh, kill the lamb and they would put the blood of the lamb on the altar and then God would overlook the sins. So a priest would offer sacrifices. So I want you to write that down. Priest offers sacrifices for sin. Another thing they do is they would pray for people. So if somebody was in like in trouble, they would pray for them. So what did Jesus do? This isn't hard. He sacrificed what? So normally a priest would sacrifice the life of a lamb, but Jesus instead sacrificed himself. In fact, I know Julie had a little trouble with this, but in your catechism, there's a verse that says uh, John the Baptist was looking around and he saw Jesus coming and he said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And that's the verse about Jesus being a priest. He's going to sacrifice himself. Okay, do you see? So Jesus is a prophet. He's telling the future. He's a king. He's ruling. I think we're falling apart at the seams now. And Jesus is also a priest. Okay, next question, 32. This one's not too hard. Who is Jesus' mother? Mary. 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 Yeah. Good job. Who is Jesus' father? God. Yeah. So Joseph is his earthly father, but God is his actual father. Or the Holy Spirit conceived. I mean, I, I don't exactly understand that, but what were you going to say? Yes. Because he created Adam and Eve, and so we're descended from them. Yep, you're correct. That's why in the Lord's Prayer, we say, our Father who art in heaven. So he's our Father, too. Good job. Um, how is this possible? It's a mystery. Yeah, I don't get it, but it's true. How does Jesus' death on the cross take away your sins? What did I just say about the electric chair? Or the cross. How does the cross yeah, take us? Yeah. So what's on the cross? Our sins. Our sins. And he it's taking our place. So that's what you could write down there. So Jesus takes our place dying for our sins. So he's going to take our punishment so that we don't get punished for it. So we're going to still probably die unless Jesus comes again. But the death that we have as a Christian on earth isn't for our sins. It is simply 
the gateway to eternal life. So, but, but he's already taken that eternal death from us. Does, does your paper have a second side? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, turn it over. We'll look at that then. Okay. So the resurrection is also important. I'm guessing you guys didn't get here. Yeah, we got. Oh, did 35. you? You got 35? What will Jesus do when he returns to earth? Okay. Yeah. So you already get judged when you believe in Jesus. We're already judged, but he will. Uh, Hello, Lorena. I'll let you listen in. Um, we're just finishing up our lesson here, and then we'll we'll be down in five minutes. Yep, they're here. Yep, we have a meeting in a couple minutes. So, yep. Can I call you right back? And okay, sounds good. Okay, bye. bye. Um, how will Jesus come when he comes again? Okay, the whole earth will see him at the same time. So just write down like the lightning. So it, yeah, Jesus will be seen throughout the world as he comes again. Um, uh, do we know which day Jesus will come again? No. No, no one knows. Who alone knows when Jesus will come? God. Yeah, God the Father. You guys got that? So God the Father is the only one who knows. What will happen to believers? Okay, eternal life. What about non-believers? Well, they're going to get eternally, eternally punished. So they get the death. See, Jesus died on the cross. Well, they'll die in hell forever. Um, I used to, when I teach this class, I used to uh, show a, and it's not the best show in the world, but if you've ever watched The Simpsons. Yes. Okay. In The Simpsons, there's an episode. I actually, it's, it's really, really good. Um, they have Homer. And if you've never seen The Simpsons, just kind of imagine this big yellow guy that is <laughs> this kind of dopey. But anyway, he dies and he goes to hell. And in hell, um, he's eating donuts. And then he eats himself. And then he comes back to life and then he eats himself again. And then he dies and he eats himself again. It's just like he dies forever, over and over and over and over again. And that's actually probably a pretty good uh, description of hell. Um, it's like being burned up over and over again, except you never totally die. I mean, you kind of are always alive and you're always dying forever and ever. Whereas heaven is the exact opposite of that. It's living forever. That's why I say, why would anyone not believe in Jesus? Because he's done the exact opposite. He's given us um, eternal life forever. Okay. Um, what else, or what are we to do as a result of what Jesus has done for us? So, yeah, thank and praise, serve and obey, worship. Did you know that's why you go to worship? You go to church because you want to thank him. You want to praise him. You want to serve him. And part of the reason you help your neighbor is because Jesus helped you. So, if you've ever, uh, like next week, we're, that's what we're going to do now. We're going to go down and plan our uh, uh, dinner for next week. It's our servant event. Did, oh, wow. Yeah, no, that's a, because we love Jesus. We want to care for our neighbor. Good. That's a really good example. Um, so, okay. I'm going to pause this computer for a little bit, and then we're going to go down to the parish hall.